transparency's sake. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, so this month, I think it should be pretty quick. We don't have a ton of items on the agenda. Um, mostly, I just want to talk about uh, the Gen 5 23.1 release. Um, and if there's anything else that other people want to talk about, um, we can talk about that as well. Um, before we dive in, though, I um, kind of started this uh, last month on accident um, and then learned about this at uh, a uh, Birds of a Feather session at SC. So at SC, there was a session on building inclusive software development programs, um, which was kind of cool. And one of the things that they talked about was having what, what was this idea of having like an inclusive minute at the beginning of meetings um, to talk a little bit about uh, inclusivity. Um, so I'm going to try to do that at these meetings and see how it goes. Uh, if anybody was registered for SC, you can watch the session um, at this link. Um, today, what I wanted to bring up, because it's kind of related to um, some of the stuff that's going on um, in the community, is uh, trying to lower the barrier to entry um, to our community um, and reducing the hidden curriculum. So if anyone's unaware, uh, the hidden curriculum is like, this is what ChatGPT told me, um, is the unwritten, unofficial, and often unintended lessons, values, and perspectives of some community. So it's all the things that you know you kind of like pick up over time if you're already part of the community, um, but aren't necessarily written down. Uh, I think generally we've been doing a pretty good job especially over the last, say, five or 10 years of trying to write down the things in the hidden curriculum. For instance, you know, I think we, you know, we have a code of conduct, we have a governance file, we have a style guide, um, but there's still a lot of unwritten rules. Um, and it's sometimes uh, a barrier to entry for people to enter the community. So I think kind of specifically, there's a couple of things that are, you know, current discussions or pull requests where we could be trying to lower this barrier. Um, so specifically, I'm thinking about the barrier to pushing your first commit um, to the Gym5 uh, GitHub. Now, it's gotten a lot easier with GitHub than it was with Garrett because Garrett was quite esoteric, um, but GitHub is a lot. Um, more commonly used. Um, but a couple of things that we could do is, for instance, having the style guide not be partially written down. I think we do a good job of, we have a written style guide, but I mean, it's not complete and I don't think it ever could be. Um, but if we do something like playing format, then we're not gonna have to worry about this at all. And everybody's code will be automatically formatted and no one will have to say, no, you're, you have to go, update your code because of the style guide. So I'd really like to see us move forward on this claim format change. Um, you know, currently, I think it's at a place where there's a lot of nitpicking going on. Um, and I think we can try to decide what's important and what isn't important to change, and then just pick a style and go with it, even if it's not exactly the style as written in the style guide right now. Um, so you can see 362 and 333 where the discussions of that are happening. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do this for the 23.1 release, but hopefully we can for the 24.0 release. Um, and the other one is like the change ID requirement is something that trips up a lot of people on their first commit. Um, and it's not obvious in any way how to get that set up until you make the mistake. Um, and so removing the change ID would also be another thing that could potentially um, lower this barrier to entry. Uh, yeah, any comments or questions? Cool, I will take that as a uh, resounding agreement that we should be doing these things. I think, um, so here I'm basically speaking for Andreas, even if he's not present. I think um, with the change of the uh, sorry, Riandras was actually about the Clank format. So let's uh, address the Clank format first. I think the issue is like we all agree that uh, is something that is needed and would make uh, life easier. It's just like whether we actually want to go for like something that use Clank format now 
and have like several iterations versus trying to get it more or less right the first time. And um, I guess it will be okay either way, but the issue we're going like, let's just get it merged now, is that whenever you use Clang format, theoretically, it would basically have to affect the entire code base. So you will have like multiple iteration of pull requests that are changing every file. So it's not that you're just changing one file and that it's okay. Like if you're just changing the format file is that every try to refine the process, you potentially, I mean, this is like, of course, a worst case scenario, right? But you could potentially have to change the entire um, code base. So I also agree we shouldn't need to pick and we should try to put an effort but on getting it there. But um, I see the value of not just, okay, let's just try this one now. It's more or less okay. And then whatever, it doesn't come with a zero cost in my opinion. I think that's yes, the I, Yeah, I, I completely agree. We should do it once and never again. Um, I think that my, my perspective is that what we choose isn't particularly important as long as we make a choice. Like whether we choose it's two spaces or four spaces or whether we choose that it's curly braces before or after the if statement or on the same line or a different line. I, I, I personally don't have any skin in the game as to what the style is as long as it's specified in plain format. Um, and if we're gonna keep, you know, doing, it, it takes a lot of work to go through and, um, you know, try to make changes and see if it works. And I think it would be nice to try to um, just do it <laughs> um, instead of, you know, bike shedding as to what the format should be. I'd like to bring something up. Can you hear sure. me? Sure. Hello. So uh, whenever you decide, I mean, you in general, I mean, uh, that we're going to go for, for example, two spaces. Well, is that the standard? Uh, because if it isn't, then people are using, I mean, standard uh, for general programmers. So if we decide, for example, to go for, let me give another random example that's more uh, extreme. So let's say that this, the number of space is 16 now for the initiation. Well, that's not standard for most of people. And if we decide to apply that, that's going to be a conflict for everybody. Uh, so it needs to be sensitive for what is more common outside the scope of Gen 5. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I completely agree with you, Daniel. And I, uh, in fact, I would advocate for saying, let's just straight up use the Google style guide and none of the Gen 5 specific changes on top of that that we've been using. So I, I think there's um, two different ways we could try to optimize it. We could try to optimize it for um, ease of use of the community, which I think is what you were kind of bringing up there, Daniel. Um, or what Andreas was going for, I think, was optimizing it for minimum difference to the files currently, which may or may not be minimum difference from the current style guide. Um, and those are two different optimizations. That's true. I think a good example of that is the fact the fact that we have like public private at two spaces instead of zero spaces or four spaces and that is completely different than every other style guide out there and something that I'm not completely sure Clang format supports. Um and so that's a difficult one to try to minimize the diffs and um also make minimal changes. But I think, you know, all of this we're never going to find anything perfect. We're never going to find the thing that everybody is standardized on because everybody is standardized on different things. And we're never going to find something that actually minimizes the total diffs. Um, yeah, we're not yeah. going to find perfection. So I think we need to be okay with something close, something good, not something perfect. 
Yeah, and also like uh, Gem, I'm quite sure that uh, several parts of Gem Five are actually just inconsistent per se. So you actually want to have a diff in a file, right? So uh, sometimes you actually achieve consistency uh, from a file consistency. Sometimes you don't even have file consistency. So I agree that using only like line changes as a metric to optimize should could actually be a bit misleading in some scenarios. Um, so I agree that we need to have like some form of practicality. Yeah. So um, it's unfortunate Andreas isn't here since he was the one who had the most comments most recently. Um, but it's been three different people now have taken a significant, maybe four different people have taken a significant effort at trying to do this. And then somebody else has come in and made many requests for changes. I think we need to just push this through. But I don't want, of course, like, I don't think the history is too important, but if I may say like, several attempts, I know that it takes a lot of time and I don't want to diminish this work, but what I've been seeing is someone takes the task and maybe spends a lot of time on it. And then like there is like a review, like a sensible review, maybe why should don't we add this and that? And rather than basically keeping like a tight loop and iterate over the changes, what I've seen is like sometimes the person actually just say, okay, well, actually now I don't have enough time. I'm going to, you know, do it later on. And then like it doesn't follow up. So it's not that people who are actually requesting the change are doing it because they want to basically diverge and don't want to the merge to happen. It's just they maybe make some requests and the person maybe disappears for a short for a time for that amount of time and that's the problem mainly. Yeah, I think if it's like a real intent on getting it merged, it would have been merged. Like a real like strong intent. Okay, let's just iterate through the review. Until we get to until we converge to something that makes us happy, that would have happened. It's just that it has been constantly deprioritized by actually the person who was handling it. And I don't want to be diminishing, of course, with that, but it's just what I've seen in the in the in the code review. So I think that's a really good point to bring up. Um, I think that with this change in particular, although I think this statement applies to a lot of changes, um, when the reviews seem like bike shedding and don't seem like they're really commenting on the technical aspects, but are you know, shrouded in personal, potentially personal preferences, it becomes not encouraging to the people in the community. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we could ask the question, why are people kind of giving up on this change over and over again? And I can certainly, you know, say why I gave up on the change. I was the first one to push it. And, you know, when I got a review that was, you did this wrong and 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 this wrong, and this wrong but I kind of didn't think those things were wrong. Like, with 300 comments, I decided I didn't want to do it anymore because it seemed like I was not gonna make everybody happy. Anyway, I, I think this kind of comes back to the, uh, trying to lower the barrier to entry here in general. We should be careful with our code reviews and make sure that they are things that are um, specific and actionable and are trying to make the change better for the community, not just bike shedding on the change. So not everything that about this change is that specifically. It's more of a general statement. Okay, we'll move on. Um, I don't think we're gonna make any decisions here today. Okay, so real quick, um, last month highlights. Uh, the issues are increasing right now, but we did a Herculean effort on getting through pull requests. So since we were pushing for the release, we got lots and lots of pull, pull requests merged. So thank you all for your hard work. Um, unfortunately, some of the issues have been, I know we here at Davis have not had much time to work on the issues. 
or try to go through and solve issues since we've been focusing on the release. Um, but overall, a huge amount of work ha has happened over the past month. Uh, 97 pull requests were merged. So that's an average of almost, you know, more than three pull requests a day, um, which is very impressive. Um, and the total use of Gem 5s seems to be going up as well. Although we really don't know what these GitHub metrics are. <laughs> no idea what the meaning of these metrics are, but the numbers are increasing. Okay, so uh, to the release, Gem 5 23.1. Um, our goal is to release it before the end of the year, so we can call it Gem 5 23, um, which by the way, for the people who um, are relatively new, if you're unaware of what our release numbering scheme is, it's the year and then the release within the year. So we had 23.0, which was the first release in 2023, then 23.1, which is the second release in 2023. Um, so the goal is to do it by December 20th uh, before a bunch of us go on vacation. Um, there's a to-do list on uh, issue 660. Um, the major things on the to-do list are add scripts to better support the resources, which is on Harshal, who will get it done very soon. <laughs> Um, updating uh, the release notes, which please, please help there. Um, you can uh, either directly edit the issue or um, add a comment if you can't directly edit, if you're not a maintainer and can't direct, directly edit the issue. Um, yeah, please help us fill out these release notes. Um, and then uh, the other one is we still need to add tests for the new workload for risk five, which is also something that is pretty simple to get done um, and we need to do it. There's been a number of changes over the past few, the past week um, since we created the staging branch, um, which are bug fixes. Um, so if there's any other changes that have been merged or PRs that are currently on develop that are bug fixes, that should be in 23.1 and can't wait for 24, um, let us know on issue 660 um, and we will make sure they're cherry picked. Does that, any questions on that? So, since we created the staging branch, the idea is we only, we're, we're gonna be testing this um, and we only want to put new commits on that staging branch, which are bug fixes, no new features or anything like that. Um, we'll also accept changes to the staging branch that are documentation related or um, un, uh, unrelated to any of the testing that we're doing. So if you wanted to put something like utils um, for 23.1, that would probably be okay on the staging branch. So then the other big thing that we need to do before the release um, in about a week is uh, testing. So um, Partial, do you have any updates on running the weeklies and dailies on uh, the staging branch? Um, I have ran daily tests yesterday night. I think they are still going on, um, but I'll have update in a few minutes, like I would say 30 minutes-ish, hopefully. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So yeah, we're running all the tests. I know the night, the daily and weekly tests are failing on develop right now. We hope that that's just a develop issue and not a, on staging, uh, but we're running the tests right now. Um, in fact, if anybody knows what, uh, unfortunately, Bobby can, could, couldn't be here this morning. He had an emergency, um, but yeah, we need to get the daily and weekly tests passing again. Um, and then there are a number of changes that unfortunately we couldn't get into 23.1. Um, you can look at the issue 558 for the things we were trying to get in um, and what we couldn't. Um, and so we'll try to push on those in the new year. Any questions or comments about uh, 23 point, the 23.1 release? Okay, great. I think we have a lot of really good stuff in 23.1. Um, so please help me fill out the release notes about it. Um, and yeah, excited to have another Gym 5 release. 
Okay, um, that's all that I have for this, for the agenda today. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up? David, do you maybe want to talk a little bit about the status of um, fetch directed prefetching? Um, yeah, I think <clears throat> I think there's not not that much progress. I have to say, I was a bit busy in the last time. So, but yeah, I found a few bugs, and with the help also of uh, Richard and also some someone else who used used my code already, and um, we were finding some bugs for for the ARM implementation. So, yeah, and I have some things I want to improve, uh, but maybe I get the time uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah, but it, it just takes a little bit more time, yeah. Yeah, um, totally understandable, especially with, you know, the past month was ISCA, ASPLOS deadlines, and then ISPAS coming up. So there's a lot of, it's, it, it's been very busy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool, thanks, David. Uh, Anybody else have anything that they want to update people on or um, any questions uh, related to Jump 5 development or anything? Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we can end early um, and get back to working on getting this release done. Um, the next meeting will be on the 11th, January 11th. It uh, will be the next meeting at the same time. Um, we will send out agenda and stuff before that. Um, and we will put the PowerPoint slides on the discussion for this agenda or the discussion for this uh, meeting. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, and I will see you all. Have a good holidays and uh, happy new year. Enjoy your holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you.